Hello once again, dear viewers. You're watching Every TV. Welcome to our news broadcast. Here are the headlines. Funeral service of Major General Haile Samuel, China, conducted. President Xi Jinping holds talks with Special Envoy of China. Hungary blocks 54 billion U.S. Uh, rather euros financial aid for Ukraine. 11 security personnel killed in Iran police station attack. In our domestic news, the funeral service of veteran fighter Major General Haile Samuel was held today at the Smara Patriot Cemetery in the presence of President Siasafurki, ministers, senior government and PFDG officials, army commanders, religious leaders, family members, as well as nationals and members of the army. Major General Haile Samuel China joined the Eritrean People's Liberation Front, EPLF, in October of 1974 and served his nation and people with utmost dedication, including as Division Chief of uh, Staff of uh, the Eritrean People's Liberation Army, Commander of Corps, France, and Chief of Operations, the late veteran fighter was accompanied from his residence by a military marching band and senior army commanders to his resting place. President Nesias Forki laid breath on the tomb of the late veteran fighter on behalf of the state of Eritrea. Mr. Yamane Gabrab, head of political affairs of the PFDJ on behalf of the front. General Philip Oswaldi Hannes, chief of staff of the Eritrean Armed Forces on behalf of the defense ministry and Mr. Ali Haile son of the deceased veteran fighter on behalf of the family of Major General Haile Samuel. Major General Haile Samuel, China, dedicated 49 of 71 years of his life to the Eritrean armed struggle for independence and the nation-building process. His wife and four children survived Major General Haile Samuel, China. President Nsiyan Saforki met and held talks with the Special Envoy of the People's Republic of China to the Horn of Africa, Ambassador Xu Bing, at Dendon Guest House, today, 15 December. At the meeting, President Nsiyan and Ambassador Bing discussed bilateral relations, regional and international developments, and actions to be taken by both countries. Both sides also discussed consolidating and developing the strategic ties between Eritrea and China. Foreign Minister Osman Saleh and the Head of Economic Affairs of the PFDJ, Mr. Hagus Kabrihiwet, were present at the meeting. Speaking to Irina, the Special Envoy of the People's Republic of China to the Horn of Africa, Ambassador Xu Bing stated that the meeting focused on implementing the joint agreement reached last May between President Xi Jinping and President Xi Jinping in Beijing. Noting that the Eritrea-China diplomatic relations have spanned 30 years this year, Ambassador Xu expressed conviction that the two countries will enhance their historical and bilateral strategic ties and increase their struggle against global hegemony together. It is to be recalled that the Special Envoy of the People's Republic of China to the Horn of Africa, Ambassador Xu Bing, conducted a similar visit in March and September of 2022. Under the theme Artists for Eritrea, the Eritrean Cultural and Civic Center has arranged the second international festival of Eritrean culture and arts in Washington, D.C. The celebration, which drew over 800 citizens, aimed to raise funds for a project to construct a contemporary studio in the country. Speaking at the event held on December 2 to 3, Mr. Burhana Gabrihiwet, the charge aide affair of the Eritrean Embassy in the U.S., praised the efforts made to advance and develop Eritrean culture and the arts and thanked those who helped with program organization and provided financial support. Under the direction and supervision of Ambassador Sofia Tesfamaria, participating writers and artists held a comprehensive discussion about documenting Eritrean history and passing on its great legacy to future generations. Highlights of the two-day event included fashion shows and performances by adult school students and Eritrean youngsters, cultural and artistic performances by well-known singers and musicians, and a picture exhibition.
Those are domestic news. Please stay tuned now for the international news right after the short break. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban has blocked 50 billion euros in European Union aid for Ukraine hours after the group agreed to formally open membership talks with Kyiv. Leaders meeting in Brussels said they would revisit the issue next month after Orban refused to back the additional funding for Ukraine's government as the war with Russia rages on. The EU's other leaders agreed to revisit the debate in January. Quote, unquote, we still have some time. Ukraine is not out of money in the next few weeks. Dutch Prime Minister Mark Root told reporters as he left the talks. Root said another summit would be convened to reach a deal. Orban had uh, promised to block the membership talks and the funding for weeks, and the decision was a blow to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky who failed this week to persuade Republican lawmakers in the United States to approve an additional 61 billion US dollars for Ukraine. Most EU leaders wanted this week's summit to send a clear sign of solidarity with Ukraine amid perceptions eagerly seized upon and repeated by Moscow that allies' support for Kiev was waning. Critics have accused the Hungarian leader of holding Kiev's survival hostage in a bid to force Brussels to release billions of euros in EU funding frozen amid concerns about Budapest's commitments. In what so, some saw as a last-minute concession, the European Commission, the EU's executive, agreed on Wednesday to unblock 10 billion euros on the money. Uh, further 21 billion euros remain out of Orban's grasp, but the denies uh, that uh, there was any link uh, to Hungary's interference over Ukraine. At least 11 Iranian security personnel have been killed in an attack on a police station in the southeastern border province of Sistan, Balochistan. State television reported Ali Reza Marhamati, deputy governor of the province, said on Friday that senior police officers and soldiers were killed and injured in the 2 a.m. attack in the town of Rask, about 1,400 kilometers southwest of the capital, Tehran. A number of assailants were also killed in a school, in a shootout, rather, that uh, ensued with the security forces, according to state television reports. The attack was one of the deadliest in years in the region close to Iran's border with Afghanistan and Pakistan. The Jais al-Adil Army of Justice, a Sunni armed uh, group, claimed responsibility for the attack, state media has said. Jais al-Adi was formed in 2012 and is backlisted by uh, Iran as a terror group. Unrest has also plagued the impoverished province of Sistan, Balochistan, because of drugs smuggling gangs, rebels from the Balochi minority and Sunni Muslim hardliners. Please sit now for a recap of tonight's headlines. Funeral service of Major General Haile Samuel, China, conducted. President Siasaforki holds talks with Special Envoy of China. Hungary blocks 54 billion euros financial aid for Ukraine. 11 security personnel killed in Iran police station attack. And that was our news for tonight, dear viewers. It is goodbye for us.